We are live, I think. We're connected to the five channels. So everybody, welcome to today's episode of The Daily Sib. A really interesting one for you today. It's something that on when Shrin and I started, when I started blogging and Shrin and I then founded Disability Horizons, we always felt that a lot of charities and disability magazines were a little bit shying away from the topic of sex and disability. And as an individual with a disability, it's something that's very real, like it is for all humans, but maybe some additional stereotypes or challenges that we have to overcome as as individuals with a disability. So on Disability Horizons, we've done a lot of published articles from different members of the community around this topic. It's always been the most read, whether that's surprising or <laughs> unsurprising, I'll let you all decide. Um, but as I mentioned yesterday, it's the first sort of live stream interview that I've done in this series that I started in, I think it was April, May, these daily sibs have been going. And um, yeah, it's going to be really, really cool to, to have a chat with Lorraine and uh, talk about her project or uh, charity, whatever it, you can tell us in a minute exactly what it is, but called Sex with a Difference. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a really cool chat. So Lorraine, thank you for, we, we've got triple the viewers than, really? uh, than, than an average <laughs> live stream. Hello everybody. Um, we get a lot of people watch the replay. Um, so I think that that's always the numbers go crazy on the replay every day. But it's just funny that we're already got more viewers. <laughs> just put sex on it and they will come, right? <laughs> uh, well, they do say that sex sells, don't they? So, they do. Uh, yeah. And, and I just, just say thank you for not minding that I'm joining you from bed today because this is my um, natural position, as it were. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's up. But I know like you have your own impairment and we'll obviously touch on any of that that feels relevant that you want to share but yeah no really just thanks for 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 yeah, chris has just put on the facebook comments sex and beer so, <laughs> so uh, we'll grab a beer for the next one and we'll you know quadruple the the numbers but it's it's not it's not about the reach i mean it is about the reach but it's about the impact yes. and support even if one person benefits for me that that's where we're at. And so, yeah, just Lorraine, let's hear your story. Like, just be great to hear how you've ended up in, in this topic and this important world. Well, I've ended up in bed because I ended up in bed rather suddenly one morning and it was January uh, 2007, yeah. um, which I will never forget because I woke up uh, completely paralyzed, which was unexpected and hadn't happened before. Um, but the lead up to that morning uh, started in August, actually, <laughs> August, so, you know, same month of the year as we're talking now, sure. and that was 2004, and at the time I was a an aerobics instructor mm -hmm. for a well-known diet and fitness firm, and I was teaching nine aerobics classes a week, and I had um upwards of 250 to 300 people that were coming every week to join me and have fun and boogie mm -hmm. and get fit and yeah. um i caught a bug that august and it was just like a fluey type bug mm. didn't think much of it thought well i'd only just started the business um so i had that we'd moved hair so I had two young kids and basically my immune system just went wah 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 and um over the next year or so it developed into me right and which is sometimes also known as chronic fatigue syndrome yeah and uh so it was a deterioration over a long time mm -hmm. and then that month that uh particular day when i woke up paralyzed it was you know emergency call out ambulances into hospital right. um and they did a whole raft of tests and then the conclusion eventually was it just happens to be a part of the me from me um mm -hmm. i'm not alone in that so you know i've since discovered lots of people of that yeah but what it meant was i had to stop trading mm -hmm. and i also had to have carers coming in mm -hmm. and that first morning when a carer came in to me and at that time i wasn't into swinging hadn't really got into naturism or anything so to have somebody who i'd never met come in and i was only in my 30s at the time and you know i was getting naked in front of them and they were helping me with my personal care so 
it, it was just quite mind boggling and it felt even though the person was lovely and obviously very professional and caregivers and nurses and HCAs and stuff are absolutely used to dealing with other people's bodies and personal care. But for me, I never had. Um, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm. And then over the following few months, I'd, I'd sort of decided, OK, well, I'd had to give up the business. The whole world sort of fell in. And I thought, well, at some point I would like to have another relationship. And yes. my health issues had, as a lot of your viewers will possibly identify with, my health issues had put quite a strain on my marriage. So mm. that had unfortunately broken down. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, well, someday maybe I might like to get back in the saddle again. Yeah. Um, and certainly if I try and find some support now, that might help. Mm -hmm. And I thought with the physical side of things, I know what I'll do. I'll ask my OT, occupational therapist. Mm -hmm. And I asked my social worker and I said, you know, can you give me some advice? And they did my care needs assessment. And thankfully they left a paper based one as well, because it was like, if you happen to think of anything once we've gone, and um, then by all means, fill it out and send it in. So because the person in question had basically shimmied past my verbal question about sex and support for it i thought i'm going to write it on the form so in big block capitals on the bottom of this form in like red ink <laughs> I thought, please <laughs> can you help me find support to do with sex yeah <laughs> and they still ignored me no way. so yeah. they literally just blanked the verbal and the written request yeah it's like wow over your head sort of thing um, at which point I got really cross. Um, there's a little bit of the Irish sort of attitude in there. It comes out of that. I sort of flare and I thought, do you know what? Sod it. I'm going to have a look for it myself. Yeah. And I'm quite resourceful, which is lucky. Um, and I checked out, you know, library books and I tried to find stuff online. And there really was very little. I only found two books. One of them was by some seriously intellectual sort of psychotherapist type people. Mm -hmm. and that was the only UK book at the time. Mm -hmm. And the other was by a guy in America. And that was the ultimate guide to sex and disability. And it was about 10 years already printed and it was American-y. But it really was, you know, on the ball. Yeah. And since then, um, other people have brought out books. But I thought there's got to be something in the UK. I cannot be... I feel the only disabled woman or yeah. man in the UK yeah. who fancies a little bit of rumpy pumpy. Absolutely. There's got to be others out there. Am I the only one? Yeah. So I thought, do you know what I'll do? Because <laughs> I had a background in training and development in the NHS and in local government. Mm -hmm. So I took those skills and qualifications and I took my experience of being the fitness instructor and I put it all together with my growing experience of being disabled. And I thought, I'm gonna run a discussion group. I'll see if yeah. I can get away with running a little discussion group locally, just to see if I'm the only feisty person <laughs> <laughs> in the area. And it yeah. turns out I wasn't. Um, and that started off a set of sex discussion groups yeah. uh, for local people at the local independent living center. And one memorable one of those was we did a session called Practical Positioning. And at that point, I realized I am bisexual, I am a swinger, I am, you know, a naturist. So all of these things came together. And I thought, well, I don't think the Independent Living Center is actually going to cope with all of that. <laughs> myself and my partner Mike who is also my life partner and um, we got together and he came to the session with me and we wore a uh, figure hugging clothes and we brought a blow up mattress that we put so we thought if anybody needs you know some people people learn differently so mm -hmm. some people learn by doing by reading by seeing so I thought yeah. well if we wear that we can maybe show a few positions if we need it and as it happened, we didn't. But, you know, that will go down as history as the first blow up that happened in that center. Yeah. Um, so long story short, that was the start of it. There yeah. were loads more people. I thought I'll pop up a website and just see if there are any more people. And they uh, arranged for an article in the local paper. And all of that led to us having a stand 
So sex with a difference, which mm. we call SWAD for short. Yeah. Um, it led to us having a stand at the big Nadex exhibition up in Berlin. Oh, yeah, you've been to Nadex with it, yeah. 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 Um, that was in 2015. Okay. And we were the busiest stand in the entire exhibition. Uh, we had about 700 people over the three days. Mm -hmm. And there was just myself and Mike. And we had the lowest tech stand in the yeah. entire exhibition yeah. we, um, had you know the little fairy lights on the batteries because we couldn't afford to pay for electricity on the stand things like that um, and five minutes before it was a little bit like before we just started this session martin five minutes before the doors opened on that first day at nadex we were looking at each other thinking why on whose idea was this <laughs> yeah what are we doing <laughs> oh, you know like this um and we just took a deep breath and we said well you know we'll sit here and if nobody comes so be it yeah um but the, the guy who sold us the spot had placed us in a brilliant situation so if you imagine that i'm on the stand behind me on the wall was our big banner so when you were walking along the exhibition, one of the sort of aisles, all you could see at the end of the aisle was the word sex. So, you know, <laughs> that probably helped. And I was seeing today here with with online that the word sex is in the title. Yeah. And it, you know, at least double or triple the, the viewing figures on the live. So yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's an interesting but one. We found it was a measure of how hungry people yeah. were for information yeah. and validation and signposting and just being able to get some stuff off their chest. And um, that that was the key thing. They were quite, you know, people will often go into their GPs and they will be quite reticent about talking about this subject or bits that are a little bit, something's unusual happening down in the underpants area or something. Yeah. Um, and we thought, how desperate must the situation have got that people are happy to have these levels of conversation at a stand in an exhibition center with no privacy in the rooms? Obviously, we moved people back a little bit off the thoroughfare, mm -hmm. but you know, there was that need. And the other thing that really surprised us was the amount of occupational therapists who came to the stand and they were asking yeah. yeah because they that's something that they they interact with people obviously on a daily basis but they felt like there was a little bit missing mm. in their training um well, and when they didn't um, reply to your original questions it's probably because they didn't really know what to say right yeah and that's exactly it so we found that the ot's and obviously there are other allied health professionals as well. So this applies across the board to nurses, sexual health staff, all that, you know, everybody basically that deals with people, was they didn't know how to start the conversation because they didn't want to cause offence. Mm. And they didn't want to invade people's sort of personal lives for the same reason. They didn't want to cause embarrassment. Right. But then Almost on like the a, other... A fear of, of asking something in the person, maybe taking offence as well. Yeah. Or it being mm -hmm. intrusive. Or intrusive, yeah. Cover things to do with, um, you know, cultural identity as well, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, how just how families work, really, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then we also had people with disabilities coming to us and saying, I really want to ask my physio OT doctor about this, but, you know, I'm worried I'm going to offend them. Mm -hmm. And things like people were worried that it might affect their uh, care plans, the support that they were getting. Mm. So uh, I'm aware that there are people who don't fit the sort of stereotypical heterosexual one partner, you know, in the missionary position sort of situation. There's mm. lots of other diversity out there. So I know some people who uh, identify as LGBT who are like, well, I don't know, I don't think I can come out to my carers because it may be they worry that the person has personal beliefs and then would refuse to come and care for them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so all of that really. Um, it's a minefield, isn't it, really? It is, yeah. 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 No, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting. We always talk about 
you know, the, the, the general point is that you need the disabled leaders and the lived experience is vital. My little tiny hesitation was just because I know there's so many non-disabled people doing great stuff that shouldn't ever feel uncomfortable because they've not got lived experience. I think there's, I really want to hit home that we need yeah. diversity and inclusion goes all ways. So, but I yeah. think like just to your story though, the fact that you had gone through those barriers and issues and difficulties is what created the looking for the solution. And then as you built that out, like tested it with some discussion groups and Nadex and wow, there's all these other people that have got the same issues. So it always, yeah, it's just fascinating how that um, happened. The, the other thing is uh, we'd actually previously been declined to have a stand at Nadex right. about three years previous to that. Uh -huh. The reason given at that time, and obviously um, their uh, philosophy changed because otherwise they wouldn't have let us exhibit in 2015. Mm. But the earlier time we tried to exhibit, um, the reason was given was that it was a family show. Mm. So even though I promised that we wouldn't be wearing, you know, leather PVC and various other things like harnesses you know we weren't going to have any toys on the stand if you catch yeah. my drift and um, no battery operated devices apart from the fairy lights sure. and then you know we sort of took it on the chin because we thought okay we need to think about this and come back but we've done a bit of stealth um behind the scenes research um, and we'd gone to a few of the nadexes and one one day, one day we were there and we came across this stand and it was a stand to help people with urinary incontinence issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they had an item, right. <laughs> cucumber with two scotch eggs, so to speak, on yeah. their tables off. And I'm thinking, hang on a sweet minute here. You yeah, know, what's the difference? Have, you know, that's, there's not really yeah. a lot of difference between some of the stuff we could have had on our stand. Um, but yeah, as I say, happily, the ethos changed and they they really did welcome us in 2015. Um, so yeah, there, there were a few uh, interesting moments, shall we say, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna add sort of with that lived experience, obviously, you know, you had those other experiences around training and around the, the, the aerobics instructor and all the different things. It sort of, yeah, it's just really interesting how as always, the dots join, you sort of look back and it makes sense. But equally, yeah, I can totally imagine that, you know, when you became unwell and the marriage that you were in falling apart, like it's some really difficult, dark times that you had to go through at, at the same time. And then, yeah, as we sort of move forward as SWAD, as, do you say SWAD? Is that the pronunciation? Yes, yeah. Like, like the yeah. SWAT team, but for sex. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say SWAD, but SWAD, <laughs> yeah. SWAD. Okay. Um, yeah, like as it's evolved, there's obviously interesting things, I'm sure, from that Nadex into what it's probably become today. And we'll get get to that in a minute. But I think, you know, for for, for people that are not looking for um, what you might, I don't know if fringe things is the right word, but like when you talk about um, swinging and naturism and toys, that, that people that aren't interested in that yeah. might then feel like, oh, I don't want to go near this topic because that stuff's not for me. But on the other side, those that want to do it, like there shouldn't be judgment and discrimination for those that do. But but whichever, whatever as individuals we're into and all the different verticals, I think what you touched upon around the professionals and the care support is yeah. so important because like whatever the personal preference is, there's a real, it's almost human rights that... You, it you is, can't express yourself, right? Yeah. I once did a, a bit of research. Um, we were trying to apply for some funding at one point, and I, I plotted out uh, the European human rights thingy for people with disabilities. The HRC, um, is it? That's it, yeah. And, um, yeah, I had a look at that. And say for argument's sake, there were 10 things listed. There's more than that, but I can't remember exactly. So say there was 10 things there. Eight of those 10 things were extremely pertinent to what we are aiming to achieve. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is that. And, um, you know, we're not just talking, obviously I, I've mentioned some of the sort of, as you very nicely put, actually, I'll borrow that, the fringe stuff. 
Um, but we're also talking about, you know, we've had a situation where you've got a couple who have been in a married relationship for 40 odd years and one of them develops a health issue and mm. needs um, a specific type of mattress. So in a few mm. minutes, if you can pop on that um, cartoon. Shall I just try to do yeah. that now while you're talking? Yeah, yeah. if, if yeah. you would, that would be fantastic. Okay. Um, so you've, if you can imagine that you've been married to somebody for around 40 years, you've, you know, you've never spent a night apart, you love each other to death, it may be that you're going through a phase where you're not um, swinging out of chandeliers um, and you just want to be able to have a cuddle. You know, a lot of people, it's just that thing of spooning and being able to have a hug and a kiss on the cheek before you go to sleep, things like that. Yeah. And we and what happened was that the mattress the air mattress that was supplied and this is this is more than one case because since we mentioned this a lot of other people have got in touch and said you know me too and um, so the mattress is supplied it's put on the the bed on top of the existing mattress but it leaves the other partner with like a little narrow space to be able to sleep on mm. Um, and, you know, the mattresses, uh, certainly some of them, you're not supposed to, the, the weight issue, you, it wouldn't really support two people. And I'm actually not sure how that would work on an air mattress anyway. You know, feel free somebody to message me and tell me what it's like. Um, but yeah, that, that was a very real thing. And I think, you know, everybody, there's an accepted thing that the power of touch is really healing and that people who don't get a certain amount of hugs over the course of a day or a week or a month, um, which is obviously particularly pertinent, pertinent due to COVID at the moment, you know, those hugs are really important for physical and mental health. And it reduces um, oxytocin, doesn't it? Say when, again? When, when we hug, it yes. releases a chemical called oxytocin. It and does. that's like yeah. the feel good, not yeah. drug, but chemical in the body, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's really, really important. So I just guess so when something affects me and I get angry about it, I use that as fuel mm -hmm. to do something usually hopefully positive with it. And I just thought, you know, hopefully myself and Mike will be together for a good 40 years yet. Um, and I just really don't like the idea that at some point in the future, somebody will turn around and say, well, you know, sorry it's separate beds um because you know we don't do that but the good news is it can be worked around because in one of the examples that i've given and um, what happened was the ot so the ot for one partner and the ot for the other eventually managed to combine the budget uh -huh. to get the mattresses or mattress that would meet the needs of both yeah. people and therefore they could still spoon and kiss and cuddle so yeah that's brilliant do you want to talk us i mean I, I think it makes sense to degree the picture and what you've just explained but you want to talk through the the image and the, the caption as well um, well we're um i'll talk about the artist for a moment actually it's a lovely lady called dotty uh, we did a shout out for some sketchy doodlers otherwise known as like graphic designers but we come up with our own phraseology and uh, this lovely lady her she's got her little thing on there dot spot and we also have a link to her on our website, Sex with the Difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put a shout out saying, this is the sort of stuff we do. Um, if you've got these sort of skills, please get in touch uh, if you feel you can volunteer um, so that we can reach a wider audience. Yeah. And she was one of several people who applied. There's her and there's a guy called Sam who will be promote, promoting and stuff in the future. Um, but Dottie has got a wealth of experience in graphic design and animation. Mm -hmm. And she really got us. So we like doing the tongue in cheek. So in the, in the example that's on the screen, it mentions about the grab the grab rail. And I think anybody, you know, the lady in question um, is using the most available grab rail from her yeah. husband. Or partner. <laughs> and uh, you sort of get the idea. And I love the fact that Dottie put the dog under the bed. I saw the dog under there, covering, yeah. Covering its eyes. And that's what we want to do is, is Good sex is fun. Um, and, you know, if, <laughs> it can be good, clean, dirty fun, or it can just be fine fun. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. it's not, if you're going to have, um, how can I put it? When, 
when air gets trapped somewhere, okay, and then sometimes the air has to come out, it's like a body burp, but from somewhere else, yeah? <laughs> and um, in, in certain couples, and it's like if you can't have a laugh about yeah, that, you to laugh about it. You know, yeah. you, you really, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's possibly you're not doing it right. Yeah, um, and I, it, it really chimes like talking about the bed issue. I've had issues with being able to have a bed that was electric but was big yeah. enough when I've had partners. I'm talking yeah. about, you know, from uni days into my 20s, yeah. I'm now mid 30s. So, throughout all of that, there's been that challenge. And when, when I was at uni, pre um sort of intercoms and alexa type things yeah. i there was an actual um it was velcro to the wall and i had to wave my hand in front to get the up there so there were the the care team that lived in and did different shifts that would because i have to have help at night so to yeah. turn me over and on a couple of occasions i went out got drunk and you know the care assistant put me to bed and someone else had said let me know when you're settled and i'll come and join you and then we forgot to turn the intercom thing off <laughs> so it went off and the care the care assistant came down and then because we were all a bit shy the the person hid and it was just yeah but the point you're making you have to laugh about all this but it, but on the other side there's that seriousness that no one would imagine those practicalities that we have to deal with with a disability like you know how it interacts with the care team and things like that so but you've, you've also got like you were saying in in your room you have that accommodation which is fantastic and um, but we also um and it might be helpful actually if you pop up the other um visual that i gave you the four yeah. squares sure. um so if you can imagine that you are maybe in your 20s and uh due to life the universe and everything you're still living at home um, but you've got significant um, challenges that you're facing. Yeah. And, you know, you meet up with somebody down the pub and you, in the normal sort of run of things, what you do is maybe take them home and all the rest of it. But it, it can be the case. It's not everybody. You know, lots of people have got disabilities and mobility impairments and they just crack on. And that's absolutely brilliant. You know, that's the way it should be. Yeah. But for some people, it just has those few extra hills that you have to climb to get to where you want to get to. Yeah. So if you're in your 20s and you pull on your night out and you want to go home, um, but you live at home and you need care and all the rest of it, well, then how do you do you really want your your parent, you know, if we're, if we're saying it quite bluntly, like putting on your condom or positioning you or something? Yeah. There is potentially it, well we know there is a, a gap in the market for that sort of sport as well and getting the right care team around you but it's also sometimes like as a parent um i'm a parent of an adult child who's on the autistic spectrum uh, as i am myself i've got asperger's um and i don't really want i want my child to have a happy fulfilled life but i don't really even despite all the stuff that i do in this um space in the world with disability and sex i don't really want to know the ins and outs of my child's sex life yeah, um, well, i don't want to have to be the one you know that makes a call or deals with some fallout or whatever you know that's their private space um, and i'm a parent and i don't really want to do that but some parents are put in a position where you know where the individual and the parents need some outside help and yeah you know, just need signposting. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's one of the things. And the other, is it okay to talk through our our groups of people? Yeah, I don't know how well people can see. It's it's a little small, but I think if, if you talk us through each of the four, then that sort of goes with the visual as well, yeah? Okay, cool. Right, so what we did, we're being supported at the moment by a brilliant organisation locally here in Dorset, and it's called the SAMI Charity, and they help people with disabilities and other challenges uh, get into employment and self-employment. Mm -hmm. And through that charity, we've uh, got some really brilliant mentoring support. And one of the exercises that we did was to come up with, to 
nail down who our audience is and who it is that we're here that we should be helping mm -hmm. this is the exercise and what came out of it so group number one is i am disabled and it goes i'm disabled i'm trying to find someone to talk to openly about intimacy and sex but people always seem embarrassed to discuss it with me and i'm worried about raising the subject with my health professional because they find it awkward which makes me feel frustrated and sad so that's one of the groups i won't read through all of them but the uh, the context of all of them but we also have i am a health professional we have i am a partner carer and i am a parent carer which is what prompted me to to go that because we were talking about that a minute ago sure. um so the idea as we evolve and we're currently transitioning from being a community interest company which is a type of social enterprise mm -hmm. into being a charitable incorporated organization i can't believe i remembered that in full mm -hmm. i'm well happy um but covid has put a stop to a lot of the work that the charity commission are doing so we're sort of in limbo at the moment right. um, but they're the four client groups that we are focusing on initially so if somebody reads that if they go on our website you know if you are one of those types of people that fits into one of those tags um then that's something that we may be able to help you with because could you nobody read, knows, nobody could you knows. recap the four for us lorraine say again could you just recap what the four are yeah so uh number one is i am disabled yeah number two is i am a health professional yeah uh number three is i'm a partner carer and the fourth one is i am a parent carer got you yeah that makes sense cool brilliant yeah, yeah. and obviously we'll, we'll we'll remind everyone at the end of the the website again and people can can do that i was going to there's a few um not so much a question yeah if you're watching and you've got a question don't be shy and uh get that written in but in the meantime quite a few people just sending very positive that this is a great topic so it, gavin said logging in for all the steamy sex chat today um, yeah, exactly what we're, we're right we got emily <laughs> emily said such an important topic thank you for giving it some time um podcast jason on linkedin said nice uh georgia i think tagged uh, margaret um on linkedin but said this is up your street uh gavin said this subject can only be covered by someone as awesomely oh. open as lorraine so you're doing it you struck a chord there lorraine and awesome topic martin great work lorraine uh paul when we're talking about the beds it always yeah. makes me laugh although ridiculous that many hotels only have twin beds in their accessible rooms how much does that say about what how society views disability right it's oh that so gets me it's it's also uh, i have a friend uh who went on a cruise and again the disability cabins only had twin rooms so it's yeah. like okay we're obviously not meant to be having you know naughty stuff going no, on you just get um, sleep and enjoy the tv yeah, yeah. yeah but it's really um because uh this is a vast generalization but if people can just forgive me but as a disabled person there are so many things that come up as obstacles that you have to figure out a way around it's like you know can't go over can't go around it can't go through it you have to go you know whatever the thing is the bear hunt phrase that just popped into my head um we're very resourceful and we're very inventive and creative yeah. um so that that's a really brilliant thing to have if you're planning on cavorting uh with somebody else isn't it because it's yeah. never going to be boring yeah. um and you may be able to achieve things that were possibly not possible before because you hadn't thought of them so you know yeah no, absolutely and we've got one more uh comment that georgia put as a student ot and disabled individual so for those that didn't see georgia was on the show a few weeks ago and it brings that very interesting view as a professional and as a disabled person um but yeah said this talk is is so useful I mean, we actually, 
Sorry, Lorraine, go on, go on. I was just to say briefly on the OT side of things, we actually got somebody that we met at that stand in, at our stand in Nadex invited us to University of Bristol um, to give a talk to the student OTs there. Mm -hmm. And they opened it out. They, I mean, they could, if they, <laughs> if they get fed up of doing OT, they could take on marketing and publicity. When we arrived to give the talk, all we saw was SWAD. It was like in the loo, on the oh, doors. Wow. It was on the hallways. It was like, oh my God. And the room was packed. We even had a couple of professors, apparently, that were there, lecturers. Wow. Um, um, and again, we were a little bit, oh, gosh, you know. Um, but it went absolutely brilliantly. And it really got people, so not just OTs. And I love OTs. Please, if there are any OTs watching, I'm not, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's like never not it. others. It's, yeah, it's yeah. about improving it. Yeah. Um, and... You know, people people want to learn stuff, and um, and it's just if we can be the difference. Um, I liken it to when you put a pebble in, yeah. you know, a lake or something or a little pond. So, what we really enjoyed about the Bristol University experience, particularly, is you know, if you get fifty people in a room like we had, and those fifty people, even if half of them take something away from that session. And those people, they qualify and they go out into the world. And then we've got the little ripples that go out into all those OT teams. Yeah. And then it just snowballs. Because, because of my health issues, I have a very finite amount of energy. Mm. So what you don't see on this session is the amount of sleep and rest I had to get before it. And that I've cleared my schedule for the next couple of days to sort of recover from it. And um, so because I have only a little bit of, of bandwidth for stuff like this, I have to make every hour count. And um, so that's why we're, we're very sort of focused on a particular um, niche. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. And I, I was just going to say before that, you know, since I learned of the social model and we've debated the, the pros and sometimes the cons of, you know, there are, occasional limitations of the social model but when you place that different types of barriers over any given topic I think it's very similar with this topic you know there's the physical environment so that would be talking about you know the the bed itself the bedroom the house but for the more adventurous people you know transportation uh you know out and in the open like whatever whatever yep. floats your boat but there's that that sort of, you know, what are the barriers on the physical environment, but not not even just about having sex, but, you know, I'm sure there's sort of, um, you talked about swinging, you know, I guess it would be, are the, the swinging clubs accessible, you know, so you, you lay over the, the kind of physical environment in a number of different ways. Go on, do you want to say something about that? <laughs> it's just that um, the fabulous Dottie, whose cartoon you just showed, we're yeah. currently fine tuning one which uh, basically shows a person who uses a wheelchair um, at the bottom of a set of steps. Um, so the the situation is that it's a, a parade of shops and over it there's a brothel and there's no, <laughs> there's no yeah, way yeah. for the person to get into the brothel. Yeah. And it, it's, you just, well, okay, there, there's all stuff to do with legalities and things, which, you know, I'm not going to talk about in this session because that would just be... It's a kind of worm. Bigger, it's a kind of worm. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's still probably good to just make, you know, we don't have to go off on a big tangent, but I think it's important to, there are, you know, there are lots of reasons around where sex workers and particularly for some disabled people, back to the human rights stuff, there, there is, you know, a strong case for how there may be ways of relaxing the law around that, right? Uh, yeah, because there already exists uh, within the sort of sex therapy field and um, the traditional sex therapy field yeah. things to do with body work and um, and sexual surrogates I think is the phrase mm -hmm. and um so the what do they call it? the sort of test case as it were mm -hmm. it's out there it already exists it's yeah. just a case of you know, if somebody needs help in making a phone call and you would, as a carer or professional, you would make a phone call to book a session with a dentist. Yeah. Well, wh why would it be different if you're yeah. ringing up a masseuse? Yeah. 
and um, there really is no difference you're making a phone call for an appointment yeah and, and that's really you know that's that's that but the the other thing is not just brothels as it were but also if you can't you you don't want to have sex in your home because your mum and dad are around all the time or whatever mm. um and you think right well i'm going to book a hotel room for the night yeah well what how easy or difficult is it to get a portable hoist because yeah. i haven't seen any hotel rooms no. in mainstream hotels that have got hoisting systems no which is like beyond all the because i've done loads on accessible tourism it would be awesome if more hotels had mobile hoists and like absolutely within that very specific case study around someone that wants to get out of the home because they're with the parents etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. you know it, it's in the end it's just about choice and control i mean it yeah. really all comes back to choice and control um and yeah just just that narrative i was saying with the social model there's obviously those things we've just touched upon physical environment but attitudes is always the big one whether it's yeah. sex or not it's it's actually just about educating we all and i guess we talk about educating society about not discriminating or having negative stereotypes but mm -hmm. something that really came out of this uh, i think it's again in all other parts of life with disability but it's it's the self-confidence and the self-esteem so we kind of need to educate disabled people as much as society about how to speak out for your rights but also just find the right information because we, we could talk about a million things today right there's there's so many different things and i guess as we get nearer to the end we're, and we share the website like people watching if you've got questions just get in touch with squad and i'm sure you guys have got all sorts of signposting and services and all the rest of it but yeah when, when you just actually demystify and simplify the topic it is a bit like when someone wants to go traveling or they want to find a job it, it's a lot of those similar barriers and similar solutions and around good, sex your good customer service is the key thing you don't have to know about every disability you don't mm. have to know about every challenge or impairment is if you're if you're dealing with the public or you're providing a service then just talking to people and being open to listening and having the things like starting the conversation and um, yeah. that there, it's just really good customer service and it's engaging with people and i know myself that the power of the purple pound if somebody if an organization impresses me with their staff mm. part of me and their attitude mm -hmm. then they've got a very loyal customer for a very very long time and um, so you know it is worth ha having those conversations and um, we've actually um i came up with an idea a while back it's like um you know if you've got your business card it's like a business card idea yeah. um and it's i call it the sex and intimacy card and on the reverse of it it basically says you know the person who handed you this needs some support and advice about uh sex and disability sex and intimacy and um, mm. please get over your embarrassment mm. and help them with with the information it goes along those lines because you know if you're talking about um personal care with your caregiver um or your gp or something it's like well how do you segue from uh i've got a boil on my bum to you know or i've got a sore throat or something too and by the way <laughs> you know yeah. um it's difficult so i thought well if you can just hand over a little business card type thing then that might help um so yeah that's proved to be quite popular actually yeah oh yeah there's all these i'm sure there's so many tools that that you and others have have come up with but i think and we're finding this whether it's at a disability specific or mainstream brands and i say yes. not just sex but all parts of life and all the rest of it yeah it's it's just about getting that awareness out there because like when you were going through that in the beginning you didn't know where to find the help yeah. and the support right yeah well we the only thing i found in the uk um i don't know if you've heard of her dr tuppy owens 
Um, yeah, the outsiders. I was going yep, to outsiders and yeah. Shada Sexual Health and Disability Alliance. Yeah. Um, and her helpline was the place that I actually called. It was the only place in the UK that I could find. Yeah. Um, and she's she and the team around her are absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Um, I haven't been able to attend Shada meetings for a while for other reasons. Um, but I'm really looking forward to getting back to them at some point. But that was the only place in the whole of the UK at, the t at that time mm. that I could find that did anything around this. Bonkers. bonkers. It is completely bonkers, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Cool. Uh, um, now, there was something I was going to say. I did warn you this might happen. <laughs> and it's gone. No it worries. Just flew away. Never mind. Well, come back I'll share yeah, Paul's comment and maybe it'll come back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just Paul said if hotel rooms all had hoist. After a bit of experimentation, <laughs> we will be auditioning for Cirque du Soleil. I love that, Paul. Thank you for that. Oh, I remembered. Yeah. I remembered. <laughs> Get go, go, go. <laughs> um, what it is, is we like, so we went to exhibitions like Nadex to see disability stuff and try yeah. and figure out what could be used additionally for sex. But we also went to some sex exhibitions to see stuff that they had that could be used if you had a disability. Yeah. So that's where we're coming from. Yeah, yeah. cool. That sounds great. I'm just going to put this back up because I noticed at the bottom you've got www.sexwithadifference.com yep. um, and then email swad, so swad dorset at gmail.com. Yep. Is that at swad dorset Twitter? It is indeed, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. So if people want to, you know, share experiences or you've got, questions yourself etc etc then please do follow up with Lorraine after today and as I mentioned we have done a lot on disabilityhorizons.com of articles so there's a lot of resources and I think I'm sure in more recent years Lorraine there's been you know a bit better improvement in this world yeah. right we've recently got mentioned along with Enhance the UK oh yeah 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 love lounge people yeah. and we've recently got a mention alongside them as being the only sort of DPO, Disabled Person Organisation, that is covering this subject within yep. the UK, like purely yeah. disabled people. Um, and that was a research study uh, that Dr Julia Banner did. She's now back in Sweden, but she was up in, I think it was University of Leeds. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it, it, her research has just shown exactly still how little there is but I have to say since we started off since I started on this journey in 2007 to now things have definitely improved yeah but that is the good news it just yeah, more to do but yeah. it has improved yeah. yeah yeah all right well we're at the end of the interview Lorraine thank you so much for being so open and, and really sharing all your experience and wisdom as always I learned so much from the people on these daily show and today's no exception is there any final words you want to say to everyone um, just to say that Martin is not scary at all, and that <laughs> the, the interview was actually quite painless and a, a, <laughs> a good chat. I feel like we could be sitting there having a, a glass of wine or a cup of tea or something. So thank you well, very Chris much. suggested beer, right, next time. <laughs> Note to self, see if we can sort out beer sponsorship. Uh, thank you very much, Chris, for suggesting that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks a million, my lovey. It, it was a really great session. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, thanks again. And we had a quick question at the end. Janet said, finding a date in the first place is difficult for my son. And we need to wrap up, but I'm sure you can both connect afterwards to, to give any any thoughts. And uh, Ags is saying thanks so much with uh, the applause hand. So thanks, Ags, for, for sharing and that. And I managed to do it all without saying any rude words whatsoever. I know, I'm impressed, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, yeah, thanks again, Lorraine. I'll be back tomorrow for the next episode of The Daily Sib. Can't remember what the topic is with all this sex talk, but I will be back tomorrow at midday. And uh, yeah, have a great day, everyone. And thanks, Lorraine. Bye-bye. <laughs>